Welcome to Kinetic Training Coaching. I'm Coach Dan Palacios of Kinetic Training. Today we're going to cover breath work and the breath belt itself. The breath belt is a tremendous tool to help you learn to diaphragmatically breathe so that you can properly control how much air comes in and goes out for a particular activity. Now one of the most common questions that I get is, Dan, how do I breathe? for running, for lifting, for any given activity that we're applying in the gym as well as life in general. So one of the first things that we assess in our training is your breath pattern. How do you breathe when you're laying down? How do you breathe when you're standing? And then we take a really good deep dive into how you breathe while you're doing various activities during our workouts. That's gonna give us a great indication of how your body responds to stress. What most people don't realize about breathing is that as stress starts to mount in their system, they begin to mouth breathe. And that's essentially panting, taking shallow, short breaths that don't allow you to really bring enough oxygen into your lungs so that, that can be dispersed throughout your system to recover from that given activity. The problem is we continue to do this throughout the day even when we don't necessarily need to be quote unquote stressed. So the body doesn't do a great job of recovering throughout the day whether we're working out or not. The great thing about the breath belt is that it's 360 degrees of direct resistance to your diaphragm. So when we talk about proper breathing patterns, Pretty universally and simply put, diaphragmatic nasal breathing is the best go-to option. You want to breathe in through your nose. As you do, you'll expand your belly out. You're going to fill your lungs with as much oxygen as possible by breathing in through your nose. That's going to help to expand your diaphragm as much as possible while also opening up your lungs as much as possible and then learn to contract through your diaphragm, which pretty much lines up right around your rib cage at your upper abdominal area here. So when we learn to do that properly, we might notice that breath work is pretty uncomfortable in general. So when we apply resistance with something like the breath belt, it makes it even more compressive, more restrictive. Now it's not that we're trying to restrict the diaphragm per se, what we're trying to do with the breath belt as a tool and as an intention is to create awareness of the diaphragm as well as all of the other muscles around the spine that help to give the spine stability during certain activities as well as mobility during other activities. The beauty of what the breath pelt provides is that direct constant resistance throughout the entire diaphragm and all of the core musculature to resist the belly as it moves out and provide that resistance or feedback to push into as we resist using our diaphragm and our core to create essentially what is like a air suspension system for your spine. Depending on the activity, let's take deadlifts for instance, we want to make sure that we have enough intra-abdominal pressure to help control the weight as we drive through our legs and drive through the floor to pick it up so that our back doesn't collapse and our spine doesn't round. Well. That's a great breathing pattern for something like the deadlift as opposed to something like the squat where the weight is loaded onto our shoulders. Before we go to squat, we'll take a breath, set the pressure in our diaphragm and create that intra-abdominal pressure, that air suspension, come down, keep holding the breath, stand and squat. As we stand, we'll breathe out. That's gonna help us to generate more force. So generally speaking for the given activity, activities like lifting will want to apply exhalation during force application. That's to say as we stand up out of our squat we breathe out, as we pull through our deadlift we breathe out. Exercises like rows we would breathe out as we pull and create that pressure throughout the diaphragm. Now the other aspect here to remember is duration and intensity of contraction. How hard do we need to contract in order to actually execute the activity or the skill that's being applied? Something like running or just standing here doesn't really require that constant level of tension. We're if, in fact, if we're running with tension, we may actually be impeding performance in many ways. So what we want to do is understand the intensity and duration of that contraction as well as the rhythm of that contraction. Running in particular, sports in particular, are about rhythm. They're about timing and placement of energy at the right place at the right time. There's a time to get tight 
and there's a time to stay relaxed and move fluidly, move smoothly. So for a lot of my people who run, it's very important that they start to develop their own breath rhythm as they run. I like to maintain about a 10 to 15% contraction in the diaphragm to keep myself under control, but allow my spine to move slightly as I run and land from one foot to the other. My breathing pattern sounds like this. So that's a breath pattern I've found I've developed for myself over the years when I do any kind of run that's uh, over a sprint distance. So 100, 200, 300, 400 meters, uh, I'm going to typically breathe as if I'm sprinting. If I'm going beyond that distance, I'm going to breathe in that pattern to help control the amount of oxygen coming in, control my stress levels during the bout of exercise, and help to continue to oxygenate that system as it becomes more aerobic and or anaerobic as the fatigue sets in. That's just one way to do it. For an activity like boxing though, we might back off, recover, and all the while, while we're creating that exhalation, we're also giving our body the opportunity to generate force and land a punch on impact. We want the body to actually become slightly rigid and tight as force is applied into the object that we're striking. So it's important to understand that distinction of how to breathe, when to breathe, and how hard to breathe as we're applying that force. Now, another great aspect of the breath belt is that we can slide tennis balls into the lower strap here, and I'm gonna show you exactly how we do. So with the breath belt here, you'll notice we have the inner band and the outer band. They work together to create stability in the belt. And then here we have our inner pockets of the breath belt. Now I'm gonna use my vector balls. I like them because they're a little bit harder and they just give me a little bit more feedback. So what we're gonna do is slide that into the breath belt pocket there. And when we put the breath belt on now, we're just gonna to wanna to make sure to place that directly on the psoas. So right here, finding our belly button about an inch below on either side is our psoas. And we're gonna strap that around using the lower belt first to again create that pressure. And then the outer belt which is gonna lock it into place. Now, again, the beautiful thing here is we have those tennis balls pushing into that musculature, that deep psoas, which for many people is very, very uncomfortable at first. So I highly recommend just wearing the belt first, breathing against it for a few minutes a day, and using that belly breathing, nasal breathing pattern to breathe in, breathe out, and resist. Now the tendency as we breathe out to resist and contract the diaphragm is to round forward in order to contract. But what we want to do is create spinal extension and open up that biological, that uh, biomechanical system to allow for keeping the body in a more open, more extensor state. So we want to breathe in, breathe out, contract our glutes and contract our spine together in order to create that stability in these muscles here. Once we've got our breath belt on, this allows us to go through all our different various activities that we're gonna go through during our warm-ups or going about your day, whether you're driving in the car, sitting at the desk, or cleaning around the house. Those are all different activities that we can wear the belt for, put the balls in for, and that's gonna to help to lengthen those tissues while we move, as well as strengthen those tissues as they develop greater levels of endurance to handle wearing the belt. We'll also start to notice that the feedback allows us to take the belt off, and maintain some of that sensation and feedback that comes from wearing the breath belt. So I hope this has been informative for you. Make sure to start working on your breathing patterns, just breathing diaphragmatically with or without a breath belt. And if you want to get the breath belt, head over to thebreathbelt.com and use my discount code KT20. It's an extremely simple and beneficial tool to apply for anyone who has a set of lungs, a set of hips, and a torso. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Live kinetically.